And I'm Scott, and this is a story of how bad life decisions led to a YouTube show. And we're going to talk about what we've noticed is going on in the world. And I'm going to mess you up before every show this, this series, aren't I? You seems, are, seems, you are. It seems like I'm doing something different in the beginning. Yeah. But at least I got the name of the show right. Which yes, I, you did. Which I get the name of my other show wrong all the time. I don't know if I've gotten this one wrong. Have I said what's that going on in the world tonight? No. Yes. I have? You- well, you said something that sounded weird, but it doesn't really matter because people know who we are right now. I hope. Who are we? <laughs> I'm Steve. And I'm Scott. We should do that back. Oh, backwards day. I don't know when backwards day is. Backwards day? Yeah, we'll have yeah. to look it up. Okay. But, It'll work. But high tech stuff's going on out there. Bill Gates is back in the news. I like anything to do with Bill Gates' new ideas. Well, he wants to spend $80 million on a city. That's fine. He's got it. Well, yeah. I mean, probably not him. Probably one of the companies or foundations. But Bill Gates is funding a smart city in the United States. It's uh, 45 minutes away from Phoenix. The only problem is India is already trying to build 100 of them. How well are they doing? I don't know. They got a, they got a head start on us. Um, they started in 2014. Okay, that's a little bit of a head start. I don't know how many they built, but the one that uh, we're trying to build outside of Phoenix is uh, Belmont. Where? I don't know. 45 minutes outside of Phoenix. Outside of where? Arizona. Arizona. You mean mean Pajonix? Arizona. I went to school with him. Arizona. Yeah. I thought thought he was an alcoholic beverage. Oh, no, the Zima. Uh, Zima. I don't know how you made that leap. There's a connection. (laughs) Connect the dots on that one. I'm trying yeah. to. You, you, you lost me. Well, um, our temp, our temperatures have plummeted here, so my brain's frozen sometimes. I see sometime. that behind you. Uh, snow in the Midwest, I take it. Yes, it's uh, a little early, but it happens. Oh, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. We'll bring that up later in the show too. This episode. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so the plan is to you know make sure you have a digital infrastructure. You know, everything okay. comes through that digitally, you okay. know, no, you know, no landlines, which we talked about previous show. What, what are landlines? No copper. But but if you do all that, then what happens if there is some kind of catastrophe? Do you have that? What are your backups? Or or an EMP blast. Right. They're going to build um, autonomous uh, logistic hubs. So all the hubs will just fix themselves in a in a, in a digital community. You know, okay. they'll, reset, they'll reset themselves automatically and no. But I'm sure I'll have to call a serviceman to come and switch out parts. Well, now here's the question. Are they going to have digital people? I mean, look. Well, it says they're going to have schools and public spaces. So I'm assuming, and you know what happens when you assume, uh, that there are going to be people there to fill up the schools and the public places. Okay. So that should be cool. Kind of like uh, Pokemon, they'll all be digital people at the schools and public yeah. places. Is they gonna find some more on the article here? Um, nope. Don't see anything other. Uh, anything other <laughs> that's interesting. The article that I pulled up and found the information on was absolutely no help. Surprise! Yeah. So. Well, I. That's cool. It's one of those things. I'm not afraid of technology. As a matter of fact, as you know, I usually embrace it. Um, my only issues that I'm having is um, it's happening so fast that corporations that do certain things lose employees like crazy. What are the employees supposed to do to make a living to live in these smart communities? Well, they, they retrain them. Um, one of the big ones that's happening here is billboards. In Las Vegas, billboards are a huge form of advertisement. You've got the, the main strip and an I-15, which is the expressway that runs down there. And there is a billboard... By the time, I'm going to have to pull up my other screen here so I can see what's going on so I can position my hands properly. By the time this billboard is ending, that billboard has started. And then okay. another billboard back here. So as you're driving, you're literally seeing the billboards. And it used to be that uh, the casinos had the guys with the sticks and the letters and the uh, right. going up changing that. Then, uh, and then on the billboards, they've got, uh, the guys used to go up and put up the the individual sheets. 
right? You right. Put up a sheet and a sheet and a sheet. Now it's one big canvas, but now they're digital billboards. So all you have is digital billboards, which, um, what does that mean? Digital well, billboards. Well, they're, they're, they're LEDs, which TVs. is kind of cool. They're giant TVs. They are, so they are. They're huge. They're giant. So they're taking those down. So you had to get retrained from hanging the signs or hanging the, to how to fix those, those boards. Cause there's a, there's a thousand, it seems like a thousand, at least a, no, got, there's probably a thousand. The, the modules of the, the, that put that together are not that big. No. And they stack them all in there and they go bad. So the guys are up there all the time working on them. Like, you know, you, you would, you know, change it like once a month. Right. So the guy'd be up there once a month changing it. Now there's one broke like every day, so the guy can go up on the thing and fix the thing every day. So, if, and you can charge more because it's technological it's a, instead of just paper and glue. Right, because they had to get a a, a degree, an education, yes, in it. or a certificate at least. Yes, and you know you talk about modern stuff and all that. Las Vegas is the first city to have an autonomous self-driving shuttle. How about really? That? Yes. Not California, it's Las Vegas. That's Las cool. Vegas. Yeah, well, um, I love uh, Tony Zhu. Tony Zhu. Zhu? I'm going to pronounce his name right. The guy who owns Zappo. Okay. He built his, moved his headquarters to downtown Las Vegas and is spending a lot of money to, you know, so that the people who work there have a downtown that they can use. Not only is there stuff for the tourists to come do with the casinos, but, you know, we have theater there now. We have an art district. We have all, all kinds of things. You know, movie theater that you can order food at. Um, lots of restaurants came down there. So to go around, it's like a .6 mile loop. This little self-driving, I think there's eight seats in the shuttle. And there are places to stand up. And it has seat belts for people and everything. Just one problem. It's electric, and they ran out of power. Even worse. One hour into its first, I guess it did a loop or a couple loops, it got into an accident. Oops. Well, wait a minute. Whose fault? Well, right away they're saying it's not the um, vehicle's okay. fault, the right. autonomous vehicle's fault, the self-driving vehicle's, not the self-driving. Yes. If the truck that hit it would have had... Autonomous, it would have known also. However, mm, you're going to have to do some research on this. So let me get my other screen up so I can do my hands again here. Truck, truck backing into an alley. Okay, my mouth's the alley. Uh, truck backing the alley. Autonomous vehicle coming this way. Truck, semi-truck, trailers in the alley. Autonomous vehicle stops. But, you know, semi-trucks, they've got a front end here that's still got to back up. So he's yes. kind of on an angle, and the autonomous vehicle's like right on him. So he can't see the autonomous vehicle. He's backing up, and, and the tractor trailer backs into it and hits it. Right. Clips because, it with the, with the rear yeah, thing, cause yeah. Because he's, he's on an angle. and, and he, and he yep. keeps, So did the autonomous vehicle stop too close to the truck where it couldn't pull straight in? Yes. Ah, see, now I'm going to, you know, I'm not an investigator, but I did drive a truck. So we both you, did. You back in the semi, you're on an angle. He pulls up to where the angle is. It stops like it's supposed to, and it doesn't do anything, which is it's supposed to. And there's also a, a licensed operator on it. So in case something happens where it breaks down or something happens, he could take over control. Right. All that guy had to do was back it up. But then again, who knows the person behind him didn't too stop close. too close. So he couldn't back up. Yep. And then the truck backed into him. So ultimately, unfortunately, it is the truck driver's fault because the truck driver was backing up and he did back into him. That is correct. But how sad is that? We have the first self-driving shuttle and it only lasted one hour. It's not it, it, It's not back up yet. And I don't know if they're going to put it back up. I'm sure they will. Yeah, but one it's hour. A, n nothing ever invented. <sighs> one Does hour. Out. 60 minutes. Uh, six it times, might have been six, less than that. 36,000 36, 36, seconds. Uh, you know, it's not that long. But yeah, that's a bummer. It would have been cool. I was going to go ride on it. I didn't even get a chance to. And you could have, you could have done uh, what happened in Las Vegas today with I, it. I would have done that. And, and <laughs> when the accident been, happened, yeah, that would have been. Hey, look what happened in Las, Las Vegas, Vegas today. today. Yes. And I would have had video of it, which because I would have seen the truck. Look, he's not stopping. 
Um, so that's always interesting. That's what horns are for, but yeah. Uh, your snow makes, makes me think of our next holiday coming up. We have two of them coming up. Well, the, the first one is... Thanksgiving! Woo! The one or, time or, a year... Or, that, or Turkey Day here in Vegas. You can't forget Turkey Day. <laughs> I'm still waiting for that. Okay, yeah. <laughs> you, you, are you going to go to your local strip club and say, Happy Turkey Day! Let's... You know, because of the fact that I think I have a bachelor party that weekend, we just might be going to one. So I'll, I will do that if that happens. Okay. Um, how do you like your turkey? See, now, see, me, I like slow cooking it in the oven. Okay. They're all good, though. We, we fried turkeys one year, well, for a couple of years, we fried turkeys. Got the fryer outside, had, you know, put it out in the middle of the backyard. And it's good. But I, yeah, I saw. I didn't get a chance to see the whole article, but I think there's some kind of oilless fryer now for your turkey. You know how they got the little air fryers? I have one. It's a small air fryer. It goes on your counter. I okay. don't know why they call it a fryer, but it, it's like a convection oven is what it really is. But it's called an air fryer. Well, to me, it sounds more like a toaster oven. In no, it's a bucket and then it blows hot air, and it's more like a okay. convection oven. All right. I, I should do some research and take a look. Anybody who cares to know what it looks like, please let us know. Um, but we deep fried them. Smoked turkeys are really good. I love smoked turkeys, but not hot. I like smoked turkeys cold to making the sandwiches and stuff. Okay. Now, here's one. We were talking a few episodes ago about life hacks. Have you ever had a dishwasher turkey? No. I've you taken my, my turkey dishes and put them in the dishwasher. Is that okay. what you mean? So, no, there's a life hack going around for, th- for Thanksgiving. The guy cooks his whole Thanksgiving meal in a dishwasher. Okay. He puts the I, corn I, I, in a mason jar, puts the lid on it, puts it where the cups go. Mash, I don't know how he did the mashed potatoes. Maybe they're already mashed. I don't know. Maybe put the, You have an oven. Yeah. Don't use the heating coil from the dishwasher and the hot water. He puts it in mason jars. And then he wraps what, what up the What about the turkey? turkey? But he, he butters it up and then wraps it up in saran wrap. But how does he Settle fit it in the dishwasher? There's not really a lot of room. Rack. Well, he, okay, it's not. He doesn't do a 10-pound turkey. It's a small turkey. It's a okay. Small turkey. It's a smaller turkey. I get but it. But he does his whole meal. 10 pounds. 10 pounds. Well, yeah. If mine's not at least 20, I'm not even buying it. Okay. But yeah, so so another okay life. I will find some useful life hacks, and we will have a show on useful life hacks. That those okay. are. But so doing your things that by about twenty nineteen to come up with enough items by then. I have one, but I have it written down. So I have, right. I've oh. started the list already, and okay. it is a good life hack. It really does work. Um, but really, a dishwasher turkey meal again. People with a lot of time on their hands. <laughs> it's even better. There is a possibility that his oven's broke. Go to the neighbors. <laughs> Before you're going to do that, go to the neighbors. Yeah. Anybody out there who would eat a dishwasher turkey dinner, c- comment on there and tell me why yeah. you would do that. You have a stove. Just you have say an you, oven. Put, you did. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I did. I did. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. boy. Like those people that go on that show to, that eat things like bugs and poisonous oh, yeah. things. And, um, and Joe Rogan used to host it. Uh, now, Ludacris is hosting it. Fear Factor. Yes. Oh, so, shit. would you eat a dishwasher turkey? Well, of course I would. Put you know, it on TV yeah, and I'll do it. Nothing. Yeah, that's nothing to eat that for, for a prize. For a prize, yeah. I'm eating. It's real food. It's just cooked different. That's you know, right. that's like the old, uh, what is it, the hobo, hobo hamburger? You wrap it up, throw it on your exhaust manifold in your car. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Cook that. So you know, would you eat a would you eat a hamburger that was cooked on your engine? Hmm? Okay. Yeah, I guess you did. Um, but we almost skipped uh, Thanksgiving and go right to Christmas, right? Okay. Now I have a question for you. Yes. How early is too early to put up your Christmas de- decorations? Uh, you know. I'm a bad person to ask. I love Christmas and the decorations, and I love those people who put 
we had a guy who put a train set out of his garage, down his driveway, in his whole front yard. And at night, the trains would go back in the garage and he'd close the garage door. And that's where he'd keep them overnight. And then the next day he'd open up and drive them around. And that guy had it out, like, October. Like, it took right. him three months to set it up, or two months of course. to set it up. So, so it was October, so that was, like, August he started? August, September? Easy. And I loved it. So, you know, you go there in October and watch the trains, and when it was still nice and warm in November. And, obviously, this was, like, San Jose, so it didn't get a lot of snow, so you could have this outside. But then in Wisconsin, or is it Beloit or Rockport? There's a few places that that to McHenry where people do like a whole neighborhood. Like yes. the whole neighborhood puts the stuff up when you drive through. I don't mind that stuff up no, for all. Halloween. So now, I got to adjust my seat again. See, see, I had somebody ask me that question. And jokingly, I said, what do you mean? How early is too early to put it up? I never take it down. And they thought that was absolutely hilarious. But then I realized I actually know a couple of people that never take. Oh, there, down. there are some people who don't take them down. I think the people that do the light shows where they wrap the whole house and yep. it's all synced to the music, they should, they should leave it up all year and then just change the music. Yes. It's, it's a catch-22 because needless to say, the sun's UV lights are what kills most of the, your plastics and stuff, which right. is what the majority of your lighting is. Uh, but then again, also taking it down, wrapping it, unwrapping it, that's also hard on it. So it's catch-22. I don't know which is harder. Okay. But how cool would it be, right? So you think about it, We talked about the holidays are the best month. But, okay, so you have a 4th of July light show and all patriotic music playing. And you have uh, – for your birthday, you have a birthday thing going, and and then you have a Thanksgiving, or a, a, a Halloween haunted Halloween, and you do all the scary songs, or and, yes. and then they have pumpkins because they do that. Some people have pumpkins singing, and then change them to snowmen, and you have the snowmen singing for Christmas, and then I don't baby New Year, and then February, Feb, February is Valentine's, Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day, yeah, you have all red and Valentine's, Day. Saint Patrick's Day, and you just do. I mean, it would be cool. So I'm I'm a terrible person. Everybody's like, oh, it's too early to have Thanksgiving stuff up, and I don't know. I like Christmas. Well, what about uh, Santa Claus, Indiana? Santa Claus, Indiana, right? I don't know. There's a Santa Claus, Indiana. Okay. And you can get your your Christmas cards postmarked from there. Okay. Yes, I do remember reading about that. And there's a Christmas, I- Florida. I was uh, considering about inviting Santa here for one of, the, of our shows. <gasps> that would be awesome. Santa, I love Santa. He's a good buddy of mine. I love Santa. So that would be cool. We could do that. We should do that. I'll work on that. Okay. And then, and then Christmas present time, right? Yes. Guess what? I don't ever get any, but eh. Toys R Us is bankrupt. It's impossible. It's not impossible. Nobody buys toys anymore. Why not? Kids love toys. (laughs) No, they love video games. When's the last time you saw a kid play a board game? Now, my family still plays board games. Of course, your kids aren't really kids anymore either. They're young adults. Yeah, but we still play board games. Yes. So... um, but what am I talking about? I don't play are. board games. I play on the computer all day. Right. But so think about it. What are they, they going to sell, right? Um, you know, chess sets, Chinese checkers, uh, action figures, dolls. Yes. You know, they're, they're going bankrupt. Amazing. I never would have thought it, but it makes sense. It's like what we were talking about earlier. It's a, a lot of people can't handle the change. And that's all part of change. Some yeah. things have to go away when new stuff comes. It's just the way it is. And then, and then, you know, I don't know. It's it just so, so Best Buy, you know, they're struggling. Which um, is weird because they're all electronics, us. which is what they all want. But right. well, Radio you know, Shack, find them on, yeah. Radio they're Shack fine. went. They're gone. So Radio Shack went. Circuit City went. So what do you have left, really? Well, you can, and plus Best Buy or or Walmart or or Target. Where would you get your electronics? Or Costco. I mean, you can get all this. Or Amazon. 
just order right. to have it delivered. I mean, unless you want to go see it and have it on display, Best Buy is really only offering the Geek Squad now with installation and home, you know, for the theater stuff. Speaking of that, I just heard that Amazon's working on a new pop-up stores inside other stores uh, to have their top stuff available for people to come oh, and look at. Oh, just grab it and go? Oh, well, just to look at and then order it yeah, online? Right. Oh, well, that makes sense. Yep. It sounded interesting. Go and see it. But yes, we are rapidly running out of time. So I just want to talk about tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. tomorrow. I love you tomorrow. You're always. Just a day away. Yeah, something like that. So they have these international holidays and all that stuff. Like, you know, World Talk Like a Pirate Day and stuff like that. But tomorrow... Tomorrow, I'll, they put two together, and I'm not sure if they did that on purpose. One of them is World Toilet Day. It's World Toilet Day. That's exactly what it is. World Toilet okay. Day. So, so you flush the toilet and it whirls? I, oh, world with a D. World, no. Not world. Uh, not W-H-I-R. It's W-R-L-D. World Toilet Days it highlights the serious problem that 2.5 billion, with a B, people in the world do not have proper sanitation. And and that is where most of disease comes from. That is right. That is what increased the life expectancy of mankind was... Um, indoor plumbing. Indoor plumbing. And then they paired that, though, with International Man's Day. Really? Toilet Day and Man's Day? Shouldn't they change it to Thrones Day? Yeah, I, that way you can be the king of your throne activities on the day men and boys health the importance of gender equality okay I get that but I don't know why why is it man's day if it's gender equality right improvement towards gender relations in all society I would say man's day should be all men get a free day at the man cave or the toilet (laughs) it's men are associated with that anyways okay so so those are the two days tomorrow. So go out and celebrate. Uh, say hi to a man. Uh, <laughs> and flush the toilet. Hi, man. Hi, man. Oh, my goodness. So we want to thank you for watching. And if you feel our show is not a bad life decision. Uh, when we talk about toilets and men, yeah. Uh, okay, it's a bad life decision. Then please subscribe, like, and watch our other videos and channels. Uh, over there, we've got Scott Thomas and What Happened to Las Vegas today. And we will see you on the next show. Have a good one.